Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. and thank you so much for tuning in with us today. I'm Myron Jenkins, the pastor of Greater Atlanta and Newton County Seventh-day Adventist Church. I want to let you know for this past year, you have been a part of our family and we thank you for being with us. We've just left 2020 and we're now into 2021. And it seems as though 2021 has carried over some of the challenges that we just left from 2020. Well, I want to let you know this morning, we have a word that's going to bring you encouragement and hope that's going to carry us through 2021. We don't want to just have a worship experience alone. We want to be able to worship God and praise him and give him the honor and glory that he deserves. See, as we have to learn how to worship God when the sun is shining and worship God when it's rainy and cloudy outside. So as we move forward, I'm going to ask Elder Melvick Smith, first elder of the Greater Atlanta Seventh-day Adventist Church, if he would be so humble to bring to us our morning prayer. So let's bow our heads and let's tune in to what he has for us today, this morning. All right, church family, let's pray together. Please bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for blessing us to be here we have an opportunity to get prayed up, Lord, as we enter into a new year. Help us to be more committed to prayer. We're thankful for all that you've done for us to get us through 2020, and here we are. But Lord, there are some that have come even to this uh, service today that are sick, Lord. They need your blessing. We're asking that you will help them where they are. Help them to recover. We're praying for those that are still struggling financially through all the trouble and turmoil of the, the past year. We're praying for those that are looking for a spiritual blessing, that need to grow, that have some good things that they know they need to bring into their lives, but they need your help to do it. Lord, we're praying that you will bless them so they will have what they need. Lord, I'm praying for those first uh, line workers, first responders, uh, those that are in hospitals and, and nursing homes. Lord, please bless them where they are. Lord, they are risking their lives to be a service to others. We're praying for them that they will be uplifted. 
at this time in our history, Lord, we're praying for our country that you will do something to uh, cause the, the turmoil and the upheaval that has come about, Lord, that it would be uh, calmed, that instead of war, we would have peace. Instead of tumult, we would have uh, cheer. We're praying for blessings on our country. Be with our leaders, Lord, that you will turn them, uh, turn their hearts to the people so that they can be a blessing to everyone that is in our great nation. We're praying, Lord, that you will uh, help us individually to, to get ready, Lord. There's uh, more coming, uh, more troublous times ahead of us. But Lord, we're asking you to bless us so that we can be ready for those times, so that we can be an assistance to those around us, our, our fellow friends, our family members and the like. There are some that have even died, Lord, or had people die in their families or, or loved ones or close to them, friends, family close to them. Lord, I'm praying that you will be with them too, Lord, um, that you will give them strength to make it through uh, the grieving time. The devil has taken a lot from us as a people, as a world in 2020. We're praying in 2021 in this first uh, Sabbath celebration of the year that you will restore what the devil has sought to take from us. Now, Lord, we have a service ahead of us and a message that is going to bring up our spirits. We're asking, Lord, that you will bless our pastor as he speaks and bless all of us as we hear. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in your will and for your sake. Amen. I want to thank Elder Smith for that powerful prayer. I want to let you know this here, that yes, we've gone into 2021 with some wounds that we've incurred during 2020. But I want to let you know the message today is living in courage during discouraging times. And I hope that you will be blessed by this sermon.
So the sermon entitled today is Living Encouraged During Discouraging Times. And it's taken from Jeremiah 29 and 11 is our scripture for this morning. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And Heavenly Father, this year we want to yield our lives and everything about us to you, Lord. Because you know the way through the wilderness and all we have to do is follow. So, thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus dying for us on Calvary. He brings us the comfort, the strength that we need that takes us through all the storms of our lives. Be with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, it reads like this. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I'm, I know many of you probably, if you had never read this scripture before, I'm sure it could have been the banner scripture for you going through 2020. But 2020 was probably the most challenged year mankind has ever experienced. 2020 entered with great expectation, expectations we entered 2020 with great expectations and optimism of a year filled with fresh ideals and creativity. So many people embraced the one quote and it went around like wildfire. It was 2020 vision. I remember one of my dear brethren called me and said, Pastor, are you sitting down? He was so excited. He said, I have a great ideal and I've come up with this great quote. I said, okay, what is the quote? He said, oh, you, ooh, you're going to love this. Oh, he was so excited. He said, okay, okay, are you sitting down? I said, yes. He said, okay, what do you think about this? 2020 vision. Ooh, pastor, I know you would think that was so good, man. That was so great. And I'm thinking to myself, you're probably about 20 million people late. That ideal has already been looked at. But I didn't say that. I said, well, that's a great ideal. 2020 vision. So as we counted down the seconds of the end of 2019, and we counted it down with great anticipation, and we waited for 2020 to start. And we waited for it to start in order that we could unleash our new, fresh ideals for the coming year. We couldn't wait. But as we came out of the starting gate of 2020, barely finishing the first quarter, our vision started to become blurry. Staying consistent with the popular theme, 2020 vision, no one could see what was coming just ahead. But 2020 or 2020 vision was all about the focusing of our eyes, seeing things clear. But by the middle of March, the world began to experience an outbreak of a pandemic disease. This pandemic disease brought on sickness. It brought death. It brought isolation. It brought depression. It brought financial crisis. It brought a rise of social injustice. It brought about a high rise of divorce, divorce rate a high rise of spousal and child abuse. It attacked our democracy. 
not to mention a daily attack on God's greatest two commandments found in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 39. And it read like this. The question was asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments, encouraging a nation that we founded, that said that we put our trust in God, we trust. But it seems like more and more as we look throughout the nation, God's word is being blurred out of our day-to-day lives. And it seems like we're taking on the, the attitude of a selfish attitude. What's best for me? Not united together. With the dust of discouragement mixed in with the whirlwind of challenges, many became blinded and could no longer see any resolution in sight. The world quickly began to experience two major eye conditions simultaneously. And that condition is nearsightedness and farsightedness. Nearsightedness says it's difficult to see things far away. And as the pandemic began to escalate its momentum into the year, looking far into the future of, of, of tomorrow, our nearsightedness, we didn't see any hope in sight. Our nearsightedness did not give us a cure in sight. No financial relief in sight. No mental, emotional, or peace in sight. We could not see a life of or for tomorrow. Farsightedness, not able to see things close up, not able to see the things at hand. And everyone, be, many began to live from day to day in a life filled with fears. Today, no food. Today, no job. Today, homelessness, sickness, no medical insurance, no money, no way out, no hope, no peace. No wonder millions of people begin to live a life filled with discouragement. I would say that discouragement is probably the greatest attack of Satan on anyone's life. He uses discouragement to his advantage. And because it is an extreme powerful tool, it really is. Discouragement can overshadow sins that you may have in your life. But you, discouragement brings about the ideal of looking at the finish line of I give up. He uses discouragement to his advantage because, like I said, it's an extremely powerful tool. It can cause you to quit on something that God has instructed you to do. Not your brother, not your mother, not your sister, your father, no one else. God has appointed each and every one of us with something that he's given specifically for you to do. But many have become discouraged. Discouraged. Discouraged discouraged, it can cause sickness. Discouragement, it can lead to sin. 
Discouragement, it can lead to losing your faith in God. Discouragement, it can lead to bad decision making. Discouragement can lead to I give up. You see, give up. These are the words the devil longs to hear from the children of God. Give up. But 1 Peter 5 and 8, it tells us this. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, he walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's what the devil does. He creates this, these, these bad situations in our lives, and then he steps back and he waits for us to fall into this, his trap, into the web of discouragement. You see, the devil doesn't care if you believe in him. He doesn't care if you believe that there is a devil or not. He doesn't really care. He just doesn't want you and I to believe that there is a God. Because when you or I give up, in the devil's mind, he hears us say, God, you're not to be trusted. Or he hears us say that, God, you're not a God of your word. You're not a powerful God. You're not a loving God. And when we give up, those are the things that we're really saying. But many of us enter the year 2020 with our plans and our dreams, only to see them, only to see them shattered by the pandemic, leaving us filled with disappointment and helplessness. This today, I want to remind each and of every one of you that what if we had entered 2020 with this mindset and faith? In God. Let's turn to Proverbs, the third chapter, and we're going to read verses 5 and 6. And it reads like this Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. How we miss that. So many people miss that. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not to our own understanding but in all thy ways in everything we do, everything we say before we make a movement. He says in all your ways acknowledge him and God shall direct your path. Why would God be so interested in directing our path? Because he puts us on a path that leads us to everlasting life. God loves us so much. The Bible tells us that he knows the number of hair that is on your head and my head. That's how intimately close God wants to be with us. But Proverbs says, trust in the Lord. So what is trusting in the Lord? Trusting in the Lord is having faith in the Lord. Having faith. So what is faith? What is faith? What does that mean, having faith in the Lord? Well, let's look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And we'll read the first verse. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to show you what faith is. At the end of the day, when you're ready to turn the lights out and you're ready to go to bed, how many of you, before you lay down in the bed, start checking the sturdiness of your bed? How many start 
feeling the railings and, and making sure all the screws are, are, are tightened and, and to, to feel around to see if it's sturdy. Or how many of us just prepare for bed and just lay down? Well, we lay down because we have faith that the bed is going to hold us. And we have faith that the bed is going to comfort us and give us a good night's sleep. That's the same way of having faith in God. We trust God that his promises are true. We don't have to, 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 to try his promises out. We don't have to do any of those things. Trusting in God, if you look at what he's done for you yesterday, he'll do the same for you today and forevermore. Having faith in God. We are now in the year 2021. So far, it seems like a continuation of 2020. But let's take a, let's take a step back before we move forward in this year. Let's take a moment. And I want you to know that for the believers of Christ and anyone who turned their eyes upon Jesus today, I want you to know lesson 101 for us is 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. And that scripture tells us this. This is the lesson 101 for us. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. So how can we live in courage during discouraging times? If we use the process I've just spelled out in front of you, and like I said, we started the year off with our plans. Some kind of way we left God out of the mix of things. But Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us this. The Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Powerful words, powerful words for us to know and to believe in. Philippians 1 and 6 tells us this, that this is what God does for us. He says, Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means that God has started working on your life, preparing on your life, and if you fall, he's going to give you the grace and mercy that if you ask for it. He's not going to give up on you. If you fall, he'll pick you up. If you're going through the storm, he's going to put his arms around you. On those rainy days and the sunny days, he said, I'm going to continue to build you up and build you up so that you can have the endurance and the faith to go through whatever life brings our way. And according to these scriptures, you might ask, does this mean I'm not going to have any, any, any more challenges in my life? No. Does these scriptures mean that... Uh, um, uh, I'm not going to experience any more pain in my life? No. Does this mean that there will be no more storms in my life? No, it does not. John 15, verses 19 and 20 leads us to this passage. It says, If he were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord. 
if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Well, pastor, what is the encouragement? The encouragement in this going through our trials and tribulations? Well, yes. See, I'm bringing you scripture, God's word, more and more in this sermon today because it's God's word that's going to carry us through. Mankind will say a lot of things. It may be good for today, but no good for tomorrow. It may not have word or stability to even stand for the day. But God's word is a word we can stand on, we can trust. It's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 8 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, he said, be strong and courageous for you shall go with this people unto the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear. Fear or dismay. God is telling us the same thing. We don't have to fear about anything because God is with us. We don't have to go through the storms by ourselves. God is with us. God's promise that I will never leave you nor forsake you is found in a multiple books in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And with this promise, we can be assured that he is always with us and encouraged to always be with God in faith and spirit. St. John three sixteen it tells us this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved us just that much that he gave his only begotten son. So if he gave his son to die for us, then why would God leave us out in a storm by ourselves? He's going to be with us, folks. I want you to be encouraged going into 2020 because God's word will allow us to be, to live encouraged during discouraging times. Let's look at St. John 14, 1 and 3, and it says this. The Bible tells us, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. What a promise. What a promise. You know, I thought about a little illustration one time, and I remembered when I was growing up and in front of our house after it would rain, there was little puddles of water, and they, it was muddy water. But for some reason, we had so much joy in jumping in those puddles, getting dirty and jumping in the puddles. And, and our mom would always tell us, why are you jumping in those puddles getting dirty? Come out of that, those puddles. Come in here to get your clean clothes on. But we enjoy jumping in those puddles. But what we do in life, we'll feel like we're having joy and pleasure jumping in the puddles 
of life. And the Lord will tell us, come out of those dirty puddles. And what we don't realize is he's inviting us to come out of the dirty puddles because in the backyard, he has an Olympic-sized pool for us to jump into. We have to trust in God knowing that he knows what's best for us. Romans 15, verse 4 through 5 tells us this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. What a loving God that he didn't just come down and just whisper to our ears and say, I died for your sins, so therefore ask for forgiveness and just follow me. But he gave us the word of God to show us that you and I are not the only ones that have gone through trials and tribulations in our lives. We can look in God's word and we can see that the prophets and the and the the Israelites and the other followers of Jesus Christ, you could see what they went through, but yet they believed in God. So many stories I could point you to. Naaman, Moses dividing the Red Sea when things looked like it was all over, but God stepped in in the nick of time, trusting in God. How to live in courage during discouraging times. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's what we'll find If we put our trust in God, put our trust in his word, pray, find someone who will pray with you, find someone who will study with you, find someone that will encourage you, not discourage you. I'm reaching out to you all today. And if you feel helpless right now, and you feel hopeless, and you're at a point in your life where you really feel like giving up, don't give up. Don't give up. You see, being open and transparent with you right now, I lost my son last year in 2020. As the first song takes a mountain. That was a mountain that my wife and I had to go through. And it was a mountain that was so high and it was so heavy. And there were times when I felt so weak and burdened with grief that I just wanted to give up. Preparing for this message today, I felt, Lord, I can't go through with it. I'm weak. I'm tired. I don't have the strength to make it. And the Lord said to me, it's times like these that you have to live the sermons you preach about. It's times like these, as a pastor, how can you encourage someone else that's going through grief that God will bring them through? And he reminded me, when was ever there a time that you preached that you felt like you had the strength to preach? When was there a time when you preached that you felt, yes, I'm ready to preach? And my prayer response back to the Lord was, never, Lord. 
He said, but then what makes this time any different? I'll give strength to those that feel that they're weak. I'll give hope to those that feel they're hopeless. I'll give comfort to those that are, feel they're comfortless. So I'm asking you right now, why not trust God again?
Thank you so much for joining in with us today. I hope you were blessed. And I want you to be encouraged that we will be able to make it through 2021. Encourage that God is going to lead the way for us. If you would like to make a donation to the ministry, then you could go on Adventist Giving and navigate to either Greater Atlanta Seventh-day Adventist Church or Newton County Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it will instruct you which way to go in the department that you might want to give to. You will bless what we're doing here at both churches. We're helping our community. We're not just in the church. We're giving out baskets. We're giving out uh, uh, just helping in the community. We're um, giving baptismals that people are coming in, giving Bible studies. Uh, we're giving communion. And we're in the community doing the work that God wants us to do. And we are very humbled by being able to serve our community. So thank you so much. Keep praying for us. As you can see, we're giving our audiovisual uh, department is giving an uplift to what we're trying to present to you each week. So keep us in your prayers. And be blessed. And we'll see you next week.